Um, let me come back here. Oh, okay. You got to say it now? Okay, let him say it. Yeah. Um, I disagree with this is the best times. It's actually the worst times. You mean like what's happening in, in the yeah, country? I mean, Why is that? Because, I mean, I mean, I, I was looking at what the five issues I'm facing right now, and I was like, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. I, I disagree that these are the best times right now. Um, definitely, it's definitely the worst times. I mean, three, three and a half months ago, I was doing great, and now I'm doing terrible. I mean, I, was, I'm, I, mean I, I, I wrote down five issues I have, and I was one of this potential homelessness. Okay. The other one is severe. Are you homeless right now? No, I'm not. But the potential. Potential. But that's not the situation now. No. Okay, number two? Uh, severe depression, extremely severe. I You're mean, depressed? I'm depressed, despair, despondent. About daily. what? About uh, getting a job, I guess. Uh, you don't have a job. I don't have a job right now. Okay. Right. What I'm, to I'm your in job? the restaurant business. You know, I was oh. a, a restaurant server for 15 years in Santa Monica, and uh, they they decided not to hire any of the servers, and just they just went with takeout and bartending. Okay. So I don't have my job there. Do you have a wife and kids? No, uh, no wife. I have an ex, and my child lives in in Santa Clarita, oh. 32 miles away. Uh, 36. Uh, your child is an adult now? He's 17 years old. He's finished, uh, just finished 11th grade. Um, and um, in the last three and a half months, my relationship has deteriorated to the point where he doesn't want to text me, he doesn't want to answer my phone calls. And why did that happen? Uh, because... Oh, gosh. I, I've been thinking about suicide. You've been thinking about it? You told him that? Yeah. Why would you tell him that? I don't know why. So what did you say to him? I says, you know, I'm thinking about committing suicide in Santa Monica at Pacific Palisades. I'm going to be probably jumping off those cliffs pretty soon. Do you have insurance? No insurance. <laughs> I mean, I know that. You don't you have insurance? Insurance? Uh, no. I mean, I have Medi-Cal now. So if you jump off the bridge, nobody going to get paid? Oh, no, 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 nobody what is. What a ways, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I, I mean. Say, so, number two, you so, lost your son because you told him you're thinking of suicide. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have spend Father's Day. A week before Father's Day, he basically disowned me, and he sent me texts. He wouldn't answer the messages. And, and did he disown you because you're th considering suicide? I think he did. Oh, okay. I think I did. I think it was, I shouldn't have. Like, I actually had police come over and stop me. And what made you, what caused you to want to commit suicide? Because I saw no hope. I mean, it was like the 10th of June, and I was thinking, there's no, I mean, I'm, my unemployment insurance is, 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 is a mess, okay. and I'm trying to fix it. And then about, how many days, eight days later, I, I finally got through the unemployment, and they're going to try to fix it. But it's like they said, oh, we have to do a, a recomputation of your claim. You know, marry your old social with this new social, oh, okay. and it's going to be done in West Sacramento. So, so go, you, you lost your job. You're depressed. You lost your son due to telling him you want to commit suicide. What's number four? Okay, one second. Let's see. Okay, so I had homelessness is one. Uh, joblessness is two. Suicide is three. Severe depression is four. Oh, and um, I guess five would be extreme homeliness, extreme um, loneliness. Um, I'm dying of loneliness and uh, and uh, friendship and. You don't have any content. friends. I uh, I don't have as close of friends as I I thought I would. I mean, nobody I has, does. I mean, like my Walk friends. Walk I have friends at, at, I mean, at friends at church, you know, I ask, they, all they'll do is they'll pray for me, but, you know, you know, they... they, they a lot of good at doing it. Right, you know, so they, they'll, they'll say, I mean, I text them and I says, pray for me, but, right, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I've been applying for jobs, I get job interviews, but I, I, I never can cl close the deal, so, I mean, I'm looking as a restaurant server, but, you know, I'll do a busboy or... 
barista or food run or expo, but my resume looks good, but you know, you have to realize that, you know, I'm 59 years old and nobody wants a 59 year old waiter. Nobody wants a. F do you know how to do anything else? I, 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 I would take any job. I would take any job. I mean, you know, I you would. You would take any job? I mean, I would take any job, you know, you because. You want to be a doctor? There's some opening for a doctor. No, I would. So no, you wouldn't but, take any job? Well, I would take a job that I would be qualified for. Like I mean, what, for example? I, 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 I don't know, cashier or, or whatever. I mean, I applied at Amazon. I applied at Costco. I applied at uh, Sprouts. Uh, I asked Trader Joe's. It says they're not hiring at all. Yeah. Uh, so Gelson's, I so mean, let me ask, you a Christian? I'm a Christian, you know. I mean, I, I, I'll give you an example. Today, I came here because of Richard. If Who had is Richard? One of your fellow um, congregants, I guess. Oh. I, I mean, I was... A few days ago, I was despondent, and I asked random people on the street, give me one good reason why I shouldn't commit suicide. And what did they say? Uh, some people said a ton of reasons, and then the other people looked at me like I, I, they couldn't digest it, right? You know, so, I mean, I have and an apartment. So you were standing on the edge of the, of the cliff, and Richard came by? No, 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 like, no, no. I'm no. about to jump. He's like, no, 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 let's go see Jesse. No, no. <laughs> No, that's okay. Let me do this. I uh, mean, I was in Santa Monica, and the police, this lady, I don't know why, but I, I gave her my bicycle, my backpack, and I told her, Look, I'm going to commit suicide and jumping off. And she said, She grabbed me and goes, uh, She goes, No, you're not. I'm hugging you. And then she goes, You sit down on this bench. I'm not letting you go. And uh, she, then we talked, and then she eventually. Against my will, she called the cops, and then the cops came, and they says, look, we can't really arrest him, right? And she, he, the cops asked me, do you, do you, did you attempt, want to attempt suicide? I said, I, I lied. I said, no. And uh, then the cops goes, well, because he said no, and he, he hadn't jumped the perimeter of that fence, we can't do a 5150 on him, you know, three-day psychiatric hole. So she goes, you, you have to call someone. And that's when I asked this. I call my son. And my son has, has been snubbing me the weeks before. And, I don't blame him. Right, you know, so I mean, I, he thinks I'm. your father calling up the 17 year old son. Hey, son, I feel like killing myself today. Who want to hear that? Well, pathetic, and, pathetic and weak. Yeah. Uh, what's your question for me? My question is, how do you overcome this depression? How do I dig myself out of this ditch? Um, how, 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 how do I uh, avoid suicide? Yes. Uh, Irma's want to give you just a little bit, and then I'll tell you. Sorry, what's that? Irma's want to tell you. <laughs> Let's say you're walking down the road, or you're standing on the edge of the bridge, and Irma's walk by. He'll tell you what to do. Pacific Palisades Park. Expensive one. <laughs> Why didn't you sell her your bike rather than giving it to her in the backpack? You could have used that money to buy some food. I, 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 just, I was going to just, I don't know why I did it. I was so, so upset. Did she give it back? Yeah, she gave it back. Oh, okay. She, she stood by and then she gave me some of her salad and. Oh, okay. So what, like, Herbie, what, what would you say to him? Um, well, that's a tough one, man. I would. That's a tough one? Yeah, I think. You know, he's, I would tell him to stop judging himself. It's not like he's condemning himself or judging himself. And uh, to stop feeling sorry for yourself. And um, that's about it, man. That's about it. Yeah. Would, that, would that help you jump off the bridge? <laughs> would that stop you if he said, hey, stop judging yourself? <laughs> I don't think that would help. That would help, all right. And then long come... Uh, did you have your hand? Okay. Mark. Mark wanted to give me a little advice. And then I, I'm doing, and I know so many people want to talk, so I'm coming to you. Phone calls? Okay. But then how do you overcome um, the loneliness? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Severe depression. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, you can joke about it all you want, but, you know, I actually was, I couldn't even believe it that on June 10th, you know, in the evening. On June 10th? That's the day I. Isn't that the black celebration day? <laughs> oh, June 19th. Whew. Right, and I would say I would join you. Yeah. No, let me do this, and then I'll tell you. And yes, my Mark. unemployment insurance is 
just, I haven't I received it yet. Okay. That's another issue. Hold on a minute. Yes, Mark. I would say that um, what you're feeling is not different than what other people feel. And it sounds like, more? I would say what he, he's feeling is not different than what other people feel. <sighs> and it seems <clears throat> like he's given credence to the words extreme depression and loneliness and suicidality, et cetera, where <clears throat> many people that you walk by have attempted suicide. Many people think about that. That is our battles. That is Satan's goal. That's exactly what he wants. And <clears throat> if I were walking down the road and someone said that, I would know that Satan has a good hold of him. And he has to let that go. All that, <clears throat> all the plans, having like a list and the story <clears throat> that you keep repeating and it's like so bad and you wait for like this answer, you have this lock and you're looking for a key and someone's gonna say if you do this, the, you can open the lock, but there is no lock. You're being distracted, you're being fooled, you're being played. Put all that away. You know, it's just like all this political stuff. Oh, it's this, it's it just, let it all go. All of it, it's all nonsense. It really is, and I'm not joking, I'm not making fun of you. I've been there too, that's why I know. You tried to commit suicide? Yes. Amazing. Down in Malibu or San Diego? I was in Orange County. Nice area. Yeah. At, <laughs> at least you guys are uh, not picking hello. the hood, you know? <laughs> when I tried that, I was in the hood. <laughs> Just walk around the that's right, you don't have to work. Uh, did that help you at all? Yeah, but, okay, how do I overcome the loneliness? I mean, All right. Like I have one more person that I want to tell you, because sometimes he may sit in for me. And if he was sitting here, you came today. I just want to see what he would tell you. Francisco, what would you say to that? He kind of what he lost Mark his said. job. He's depressed. Yeah. He told his son he wanted to commit suicide, and his son is gone. Uh, I have a big he, hole in my heart. He has a big hole in his heart, no Medicare. No, selfish, but selfish, me, 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 selfish thing. You're, you know that a lot of times when you tell your siblings or your, your kids that there's a chance that he'll commit suicide because you committed suicide, you want him to die? It's um, not going to help him jump off the bridge. Well, I mean, he's thinking about himself. I'm trying to I mean, get him off the cliff. You about to make him jump off. Come on. <laughs> Come on back. So now come he's really back. guilty about his son. He already has that. Yeah, come on back, because what you, what you have is just conversations with the devil. And you're not, uh, you're kind of out in the wrong place right now. And, Did that help? Uh, I, I talked to some friends from church, and they're texting me, and they says, I says, look, if I got a job, this would all disappear. And... He goes, have you had a job? And he goes, no, I don't. And he goes, I mean, this is the longest job stretch. I have been unemployed since Friday the 13th. And I get a lot of job interviews because I look really good on paper. But, you know, I mean, I apply for a job. And he goes, you know, the mustache has got to go, you know. I goes, I'll, I'll shave the mustache, no problem, no problem. Right, you know, but I didn't get the job yet. So, I, so I'm not going to shave it until oh, whatever. Man. How, what's your first name? Alex. Alex. Al, no, Alex. A L E X. That, that's how you spell yours too, right? Uh, A O E X. Same thing. Let me just say this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you came to me and told me that, I would say, Alex, you have an amazing life. This is perfect for you. This is where you need to be because God is trying to get your attention. You put your faith in everything but Him. And now you're losing it, you're losing your gods, you're losing your job, you're losing your place, you're losing your woman, you're losing your son, you're losing everything. And because you made them your god, they're false gods, there's no peace in them at all. And now that you're losing, it feel like you're losing your life, right? But if you were to realize, you know what, this is a wake-up call for me. And I would get to know myself to see why that I put those things before God, because that's what you had done. So I recommend you be grateful for these moments. Count it all joy that you're going through this because it's going to make you search for God. And, and you will find him because he's allowing this to happen 
to bring you back to him. You need to be happy that you see this. And as someone said, one of the guys said, don't name it as depression. It's really a separation from God. And Satan is your daddy, and he's trying to kill you. He, caught, he deceived you to make you think job, money, women, whatever, is what you needed. But really what you need is a return to the Father. And so now you have a perfect opportunity to do that because nothing is in the way. And once you let that anger go and return to the Father, you would never know suicide anymore. You would never be depressed. You would never be lonely. And all your needs will always be met because now you love God with all your heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else. So you need to overcome your anger. Get to know yourself. You need to forgive. Stop being mad so that he can forgive you. And everything will change. No matter what it looks like right now, it will change. Things will start happening. But you got to come to God by forgiving so that he could draw you in. I forgive. You start with your mother first. And then your, is your mother still living? My mother's in a nursing home in Gibson's in Canada, Gibson's Island. What, in Canada? Yeah, she's like 82, 83. Are you able to speak to her on the phone? Yeah. I, 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 I guarantee, well, I don't guarantee you I'm not God. I, but call her up and say, I mean, get to, get to know yourself first and you'll see that you have her identity. You think like your mother and you feel like your mother. You act like a woman. Yeah, but I don't want to tell my mom that I... I was, I'm seriously committing suicide. She's got... No, don't tell her that. Just no, say, hey. Look no. at me, Alex. Just yeah. say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. You know, I wish you were I, raising you. I don't you. really resent my mom. He just... Uh, my mom... My dad is the one that's the big problem. But my dad died in 2005. I forgave him. What did he do to you? Uh, he uh, physically beat me. Uh, well, that's the only way you could beat somebody, physically. Well, okay, that's true. He, he beat me. Yeah, he was emotional, just... Uh, I was the first child. I was the bastard child. And uh, what do you it, mean about you born out of well? Yeah, and then they marry. He had to marry my mom just because I was born. And he, he, yeah. let, he never let me. He, he made sure I remembered him. Call, he goes, you know, you're the bastard, right? You know, and he told me this. Piece. So I disowned my. What I did is what happened is I unfortunately around 18 or 20. I don't know what how old I. I disowned my dad for like 24, 27 years, and now. My son has disowned me. Yeah. So it's like, and I used the word dis. I told my son that I disowned him months and maybe a year ago, and now he's using the exact same language against me. Yeah. So it's the cycle has completed because I disowned my dad. I right. guess God is punishing me by my son. My son disowned him, and because I'm a hunter, hunter is my only son. Well, I mean, he's my he's an only child. It just Hunter is, it hurts even worse. I mean, my dad had at least three child, three, ch three boys. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it's destroying me. So let I me mean, ask, let me ask I, you this. I mean, like, like I mean, I'm gonna, I don't want to come home today and I'm goes, okay, I'm going to lay down on the, on the carpet today and just mope. Or I'm going to lay on the sofa and look up at the thing and go, and, and, and Alice, I've, I've Alice. got severe depression over the last three Alice. days. Alice, yeah. come back. Sorry. Uh, you, so you deal with all this stuff. You're depressed. You're lonely. You're all this, right? Would you want your son to hate you in this condition? He probably hates me in this I condition. Said, would, do you want that? You like that? He hates you? No, he probably thinks I'm a loser. No, but do I, you, I wasn't a loser 100 days Alex, ago. Come back. Or Alex, March 12th. Alex, do you want your son to hate you for something you cannot control? You can't control yourself right now. You're not in control, right? You don't want to feel this way, right? No, I don't. And this, is, this, is, this, is, this is hell on earth. I can't. That's right. why I'm thinking of suicide. So come back, come back. And so you wouldn't want your son to hate you for something you have no control over, right? I, I, I don't have control over it. I, I don't. Right. You do not have control over it. I mean, it. if I could control. I mean, I'm trying to control Alex. joblessness, homelessness. <laughs> Sorry. You wouldn't want your son to hate you for being in this condition, right? You can't control yourself, right? No. When, when your father was in that condition, he didn't want you to hate him, but you did. And that's why you get it back what you deserve. You should not hate your father. He couldn't help himself. Yeah, he had a, a rough childhood. But right. he, and I, I don't that's think right. he had a physical childhood. He had a cold, distant childhood where the mom and so, dad were both 
highly functioning alcoholics. Right. So, Alex, just as you, what, all the stuff you're feeling right now, that's what he felt when he was yelling at you, calling you a bastard child and all that. He didn't want you to hate him because he could not help himself. Just like you don't want your son to hate you because you can't help yourself. You see, see what I'm saying? So. Forgive your father and you'll be fine. Okay, if I forgive my father, just I don't know how, how my son can forgive me. Don't worry about that. He will. Yeah, because but will you, I be alive then? I mean, six months from now, will I be alive or will I have actually Alex, done the deed? Where is six months? I mean, I mean to be honest, this is what I, I, I was thinking of until before, during, before that suicide attempt. I was thinking three options. I was thinking two options, jobless, uh, homelessness or suicide. And then I talked to one of my neighbors, like a you know, just recently and two, three weeks ago, and she says, uh, there's a third option. And I goes, what's the third option? Uh, par paralysis. And then she's like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, I, I had a friend that, you know, works at Cedar sinai and this 24-year-old this jumped off the seventh floor of an apartment building, and he survived. He's paralyzed now. And I never thought there would be she a third option. She was suggesting that? She was suggesting that there's a third option, is if you fail to co do the suicide what? completely. What the? She says, you're going to be paralyzed. That's what you get for telling a woman your problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alice, stay with me. Stay with me. Can you stay with me for a moment? Yeah, yes. The way you feel is the way your father felt. And your father did not want you to hate him, but, but you did. Likewise, the way you don't want your son to hate you, right? No, it's, it's, it's destroying right. me. I mean, mentally, it's, it's, it's well, a mind you hate, screw. When you hated your father, it broke his heart, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. He actually, to be honest, he did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you say this. He actually attempted suicide to try to get a hold of me. Yeah. And I didn't. And I didn't. I'm telling you and I didn't uh, respond. Now you're getting back what you put out. But it can change just like that. Well, then I, I must be Satan because of all the no, bad Satan things. No, Satan is your daddy right now. You're listening to him. You're a son of Satan right now. That's why you're listening to him, and he's telling you to jump off a bridge. Everything is hopeless. You're never going to be anything. You're listening to lies, your daddy. But if you forgive your father knowing now, by knowing you, knowing yourself, you cannot help yourself, it will help you to realize your father could not help himself. And that will cause you to forgive him. And God will forgive you, and he'll bring you into the kingdom, and you, you will have an amazing life. But how is that going to stop the, the loneliness? How is he'll take all that away from you, because he will fulfill you with perfect love. What, you, what you're experiencing right now is the, the yearning for a father. But Satan is telling you that it's loneliness, but you're really yearning to return to God. And if you forgive your earthly father, God will forgive you, and then you'll be home, and you'll be fine. Yeah, but it's, I mean, I, what, I don't, what I don't want is that after I leave here, I don't want to go home and go, okay, I'm going to go on the, on the couch Alice, and lay down there or lay on the floor down there. Alice, don't depression. worry about that. Depression. That'll take care of itself. All you have is right now. You're living in your head, and you're living in the future that doesn't exist. You don't know what's going to happen when you leave here. But you're living in your head. There is no future. There is no past, man. All you have is right now, but you believe in lies in your head. So I'm overthinking it. Yeah, because you listen to your dad is Satan. That's why you have to forgive your mother, because you have to overcome her. You must, you, have you heard it said, been said that you must be born again? Yeah. So you got to overcome your mother by being born again in the spirit. Right now you, have, you were born of your mother, so you have her identity. But once you're born of the spirit by forgiving your parents, then you, you will have God's identity, and it'll be amazing. But you've got to forgive so you can live in the present. He's not in the past or the future, but you're living in your head, man. You're thinking about six months from now. You're thinking about when I get home, I have to sleep on the floor or whatever. Satan is distracting you right now. Doubt every thought. Every thought is a lie. No such thing as a true thought. Do you think, is God telling you to jump off the bridge? I don't, I don't think God is telling me to jump off the bridge. It's just think, despair and despondency do you think, and loneliness. Do you think you are telling yourself to jump off? Yeah, I'm telling myself to jump uh, off. But you listen to who? 
I'm listening to the pain of depression. No, you listen to thoughts. And you believe in a lie. And, and Satan tell you, oh, you're depressed. You have no friends. You have no home. And you're like, yeah, daddy, you're right. And then once you believe a lie, he's like, go jump off the bridge. Life is not worth living. He's lying to you, Alex. So life is worth living. Majorly. It is amazing. If you do what I'm telling you to do, you'll be amazed. I have a silent prayer where you just sit still so God can bring you out of your thoughts. He said bring every thought into captivity. That his voice is a voiceless voice. It's annoying. And so you need to come out of your head. Satan is trying to rob, steal, and kill you. And you're listening to him, and you're judging yourself. You're judging everything. I think Irma said, one of the guys said, you're hating yourself. You got to stop it. But you only believe in Satan. All is well, man. And this is a perfect time for you. It's not a bad time. It's a perfect time. I mean, I was a hoarder. And I, you I was a whore? Hoarder. Hoarder. We I was all a, been a whore at one time. Hoarder. I mean, I was... <laughs> I was a hoarder, and I, I, did, I did accomplish something. A hoarder? Hoarder. I was, oh, you mean you got a lot of stuff? Yeah, I was a severe oh. hoarder, and it, it, like it, it was like, I mean, I de-hoarded about 80%, but, you know. Where did you sell it then? I, I, I sold stuff, and I threw stuff away. It was a bunch of junk, papers and newspapers and everything, yeah. and I've never but, dealt with it. And my neighbors were like, wow, you de-hoarded, but after a certain point, Alice, like clearing Alice, 80%. Alice, Alice, stop it. You sound like my wife if I had one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't want to hear all that. Yeah, okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you how to overcome it. Yeah. This is perfect for you to turn to the Father. You have nothing else to rely on right now, right? No. And instead of looking outside, you need to look within. You need to overcome your anger. Forgive your Father. He couldn't help himself just as you cannot help yourself. I think I've forgiven him, but is that... You mean I'm having depression because I, I can't forgive my dad? I yes, think. absolutely. And your mother. Forgive your mother for being all crazy. Well, my mom was great. She was. She, your mom she, was great? No such thing. She was fairly good. I mean, she. <laughs> I, I would say that she put up with an abusive husband. No, and she you didn't. Know, in the 70s, you know, that's, Alex, we, we never get therapy Alex, and everything. Alex, that was an option. Alex. You're thinking like your mother. Your mother was not an angel. She drove your dad nuts. Your father was married or was dealing with his mother because he never overcame his real mother. And your mother was his mother. He couldn't handle her. That's why he beat her. Oh, he was very abusive. Yeah, he threw shoes at her. her. Because she was just like his mother, Alex. Hmm. And so you got to forgive your mother. She was not an angel, man. And then, and then you can love her with the right kind of love, with God's love and not emotional love. And then forgive your father, you return to God. I thought I forgave my dad because I, I know when he died, he had cried for a solid month, two months afterwards. But so. that's not forgiveness. Every woman cries for a month when you leave them. <laughs> <laughs> Until they find another guy to replace it. That doesn't mean anything. You got to see that it's wrong to resent your father and your mother. You're playing God by resenting them and by having an anger for, for him. You have it for your mother too, you just don't realize it. It separates you from God because no man can get to the father unless he loved the son. And your father, in his weak way, was a son of God, but you hate him, and that way you can't know God. But if you forgive him, you, that means you love him, then you can know God. Okay, if somebody said, what are the top three things you, you can do to avoid committing suicide? What would be I the top three things? Forgive. Forgive. Your father and your mother. That would be one. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all that's you need. And that's enough to avoid suicide. Yes. Absolutely. Start living, man. I'm trying to live. It just, right, is... you can't do it on yourself. Really. You have to see that you can't. And you got to forgive so God can forgive you, and he will take control and guide you. you got to forgive, man. So forgive your dad and your mom. Yes. But they couldn't I, help themselves, just as you can't help yourself right now. You don't want to jump off a bridge. I don't. You don't I'm want, worried. I'm worried that I'm going to fail at it. No, you I'm actually fine. worried I'm going to be paralyzed. Before you leave today, I'm going to show you how to do the silent prayer. Yeah. That way you can see how God can take over, all right? But you'll be fine, man. These are an amazing time for you. 
Amazing. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Really. Saying, it, saying it is deceiving you. You listen to his voice and you don't realize it. But you know, the funny part is that I've been, I've been a Christian, and I mean, I, I, I've been a, a Christian since 2004, and I never, as a Christian, I never believed in Satan. I always believed that there's always goodness. So I don't, I'm starting. To, you don't believe there's good and evil? I guess I never believed there was, there was Satan before. Well, but I, now, I mean, I guess, should I start believing that there's Satan? If you want to overcome this. Yeah. It's not God that's trying to make you jump off a bridge. And it's not you. You have that spirit that came from your mother inside of you and hating your father. Your father hated his mother, his life was screwed up. You hate your, your life is screwed up. And you don't hate your mother, you just hate your mother, I mean your father. You just hate him with your mother's hate because, hatred because she acted like a victim when your father would beat her. She was like, oh, poor me. Oh, look, Alex, your father's mean. And you're like, oh, he sure is. He's so mean. But if your mother had told you, Alex, don't worry about this. Your father loves you. It's just difficult to deal with me. He loves you. Don't identify with me. I'm not a victim. You would be fine today. But she turned you away from your father. Well, I, I got, OK, I got a question here. If Recently, um, I talked to my brother, and he goes, why are you so screwed up individual? And he asked me, he and did. And you should say because of your mama? No, he, he says, look, he was asking me, I goes, I don't understand why you're so screwed up. You know, in the family of these three boys, and you're so screwed up. And I actually says, look, maybe it's because I was, you know, molested at age 15, you know. Yeah, and then I molested. Yeah, and then he goes, then I told him, you know, and I, I thought I would take that secret to the grave. And I, I wanted to take that secret to the grave, but he was just bugging me so much about it. You know, like, blah, 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 blah. I can't figure out why, you know. So it's like, maybe that would help. And then I, I told other people about it, but, you know. It's, Alex, stop telling everybody about your problem. They're just going to judge you. Yeah. yeah. Don't be telling people your problem. And never tell a woman. Well, that's a lot. Some of the women here are going to hate you for saying that. Well, these are not because they know better. They understand that. Yeah. They understand it. But if you're out there at Santa Monica and you're telling those women, they're going to think of you as a molester and they will not trust you around <laughs> kids and anything. They would judge you. So stop doing that. I've only told like four people. That's enough. <laughs> All you need to tell is one. Yeah. <laughs> Telephone, telegraph, tell a woman. <laughs> Three ways of communication. I'm going to have to move on, but I'm going to show you how to do the silent prayer so you can come out of your imagination, all right? And you'll be fine. Realize your father went through just what you're going through now. And he loved you, but he just couldn't help himself. Well, then I'm torturing him because if I'm, what I'm going through is like life hell on earth right now it is hell on earth you know but once you forgive you will have paradise on earth all right okay. you feel better yeah 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 but it's a but. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll get you past the butt in a minute yeah. all right so cool down you're in the right place at the right time yeah, is this, I feel like garbage. That's good. You are garbage. Yeah. <laughs> All the Satan children are garbage. So don't worry about it. God loves you. We'll get you back to him, okay? I need a job. That's what I need. <laughs> you sound just like my wife, man. If I had one. But hold on. Let me come back to you a little later, all right? Okay. I'm glad you're here. Okay. So, Alice, I want you to... Relax. Sit up in your chair and relax. Straight in the chair. Relax. Yeah, like this. Okay. Put your hand, yeah. And the reason I have your palms up because heaven is above and it's inside. All right? And what I want you to do, and I'm talking to everybody too, when I have you close your eyes, uh, at some point I want you to tell, look out for the first thought. See what the first thought you get, all right? And you hear me? What? Yeah, I, I Speak up. I don't know why I'm getting so weirdly emotional right now. I don't know 
That's all right. Just let it be. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, don't let it happen. Don't try to control anything. Okay. All right. So I want you to just sit straight, relax. I want you to close your eyes and let go. Let yourself melt in the, in the, in the chair. Don't hold on to anything. Don't hold on to any thoughts or anything. Don't worry about tomorrow, yesterday, or when you get home or anything. Just close your eyes and relax. And you're going to hear a baby cry, and that's beautiful because it's happening in the present. It's not happening tomorrow or yesterday. And so from, from the uh, top of your head, just be aware of the top of your head and just travel down from your head. Be aware of yourself traveling, the energy traveling from your head. Let your eyeballs relax. Let your eyes relax in the socket. Let your tongue just relax. Sit straight up and just let your tongue relax. There you go. And be aware that this energy is traveling down your body, your shoulders, your arms. And just totally relax. Down your legs, all the way to the tip of your toe, just relax. Let yourself melt in the chair. Don't hold on to anything. And uh, <clears throat> um, let yourself breathe. You will naturally breathe. God created you to breathe. You don't have to force that to happen. Just let yourself breathe. And then totally relax. Total relaxation. And, and I want you to be aware of the center of your forehead. Just stand back and observe the center of your forehead right above your eyebrows. Become aware of that area. Just stand back and look toward that area. And watch out for the first thought that comes. Just relax and look for the first thought. It's like you're standing uh, at a stoplight and the cars are going by and you're waiting for that first light to turn green so you can cross. So just be aware of the first thought that comes. And once you see it, let it go. Don't hold on to it. Don't have a conversation with it. Don't call it good or bad. Don't call it evil or non-evil. Just be aware of it. You are the observer. God is the creator. So just be aware of that thought. Don't hold on to anything. Just be aware. And just relax. Let go of every thought that comes. The ones that seem good and the ones that seem bad, they are both imposters. They build you up to let you down. They let you down to build you up. And just know God is in the presence. He's with you. So let every thought go. Don't believe anything. And I'm just going to be quiet one minute. To the people on camera, I'm going to be quiet one minute so all of you, especially Alex, can have that quiet moment. And just be aware of your thoughts, Alex. And I'm going to tell you in a minute to open your eyes, and you can tell me what your first thought was. But don't hold on to it. Just be aware. And so I'm going to be quiet just for one minute. Totally relax. Let go. You can hear the cars going by. That's beautiful. You're not in your head. We're almost there. Relax. Be the observer of life. All right, so I want you to just slowly come out of it. Don't rush out of it, rush into work or anything. Just slowly come out of it, Alex. And stretch, just kind of wake yourself up. And come back together. 
that's the, that's the silent prayer. The, you observe those thoughts, and you will see that you're not your thoughts. And God will bring you further and further. You went into your thoughts when you were little kids, a little kid, because you were traumatized, and you escaped into your head to try to survive. Now that you're an adult, you've got to come out of it, come back to the Father. Uh, what was your first thought? I was having no thoughts. I was trying to say something deep and profound, and I was like, well, I don't have anything deep or profound to say. I was like, beautiful. Nothing, like no thoughts. I was like, and I'm thinking, I'm and thinking, it's almost like I'm, sorry. Uh, you were having I, no thought. You no saw thoughts. No thoughts. I was trying to say something deep and profound, but I couldn't think of anything deep or profound that came into me. And I'm thinking, I'm overthinking this or whatever. Yeah. And, I'm li I guess my logic is going inside that forehead of mine and thinking yes. and because logic, Sa ration, reason, etc. And maybe that's not the solution. Yeah, say say we're telling you, oh, you got to say some deep and profound. Look for some deep. That's Satan talking to you, and when you observe that, you can see him talking. The thoughts are from him, and when you see it, you're not in it. You're observing it, and it has no control over you. It can't deceive you to want to jump off the bridge or tomorrow's a bad day because all you have is this day, this moment. So if you practice that every day and night, you're going to be surprised, amazed at what happens. How long? How long should I do the silent prayer? Uh, you could start out five minutes, you know, ten minutes, some better than nothing, and you'll grow into the time. So I do it in the morning when I wake up? In the morning when you wake up. And before bedtime? And before bed. And the purpose of the silent prayer is to... To separate so God can bring you out of the darkness of your imagination into the light. So you can see and stop believing the lies from Satan because those th you think those thoughts are your own, but they're not. So it's, I'm not controlling my thoughts. No. They're controlling you. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yes. And that's what, he want, that's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to believe him and doubt God. But if you doubt Satan, doubt those signs, you have faith in God. The only thing that is left is faith. You have no other choice but to have faith. And you can't feel it, you can't taste it, you can't touch it. You just live by it. You would never doubt again whenever you doubt thoughts. But I hate, you know, I hate coming home because home well, is Hey, don't worry about that now. Tell, see, you still believe that you're living in the future. It, it's not, it doesn't exist. All you have is right now. Let that go. That's Satan telling you that you hate going home, and you're believing it. So I wait should. until you get home. Have a wait-and-see attitude. Enjoy this moment, because that's all you have right now. Everything else is an illusion. So don't dread coming home. Don't, don't believe Satan when he say you regret going home. Be grateful for your home. I but, am kind of grateful, but, you know, it's just like... Don't do it a but. Just yeah, have a but, I guess. Yeah, just wait. But do the silent prayer, and you will see what I'm talking about. Stay with it. Okay. That makes sense? What's that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, the silent prayer is so, it's just to, to get me to stop from even de deep, dark, depressing things. Yeah, bring you out of the deep, dark depression of your imagination. Your thoughts are not your own. No such thing as true or good thought. Doesn't exist. Got a lot of work. No, it's easy. You have no work. You just need to be still and observe, and it'll unfold by itself. God love you. He, he already have everything you need, but it's inside of you. You got to start looking within like that by staring out of your head. Yeah. And you, it, it's going to all come out. It's going to be amazing. Just do the silent prayer and doubt every thought. And so Satan, when Satan's telling you, oh, you're going to regret going home, it's going to be awful, let that pass. Don't believe it. Because if you believe it, you're going to act it out. But if you doubt it, it's going to be amazing. So let it pass. So doubt the, the negative. Corporate. Doubt all thought. No such thing as a positive thought. Yeah. So he's going to tell you that your son hates you, right? You don't know what your son feels right now. And, and that'll take care of itself. You work on you. Oh, I want to see him, though, but he won't see me. No, hey, look, that's fine. Accept that. You brought that up on yourself because you listened to the lies. Accept it. Don't blame anybody. Accept it, but don't hate it, and it'll work itself out. 
you are becoming the son of God, and the father loved the son, and he will bring your son back to you too. Don't worry about that. You work on you right now. It's so much work. It's better than what you're about to jump off a bridge. Yeah. Let's see how much work that is. So just relax and watch. Stay out of your head. Don't be thinking about what's going to happen later. Don't think about tomorrow, yesterday. It doesn't exist. All you have is now. So I shouldn't think of suicide as an option. Okay. Suicide is not an option. Okay. As the young man said, it's not an option. Life is an option. He gave you life, so you need to start living. And now you put your faith in him instead of in things. You'll get those things back, and it'll be greater than what you had. But your relationship would be with the Father. Those things would not be your God. You can take it or leave it. But I'm emotionally dead. I get no pleasure from anything. People are telling me, go watch America's Got Talent on YouTube, what? do crossword, pal. okay, do listen. crossword puzzles. Hey, I get no hey, pleasure hey, from hey, anything. Hey, don't stop bitching. Stop it. Stay out of your head. Whatever they have told you, forget about it. Take this moment. That's all you have. The only thing is this, not what people have told you, what is now. So how do I get pleasure from, from life? No, don't look for pleasure from life. You want peace from God. All right? Instead of pleasure. Yeah. Pleasures of Satan. It's all ego. So it is, but there's pleasure and pain. They play in pain? Sounds like a song. What do you mean? <laughs> well, this, you either choose pleasure or use pain in life. Don't choose either one of those. Just stay in the present with God and, and let his will be done. All right? Just stay inside. I got, I'll talk to you some more later, but I got to end because yeah, I'm in a problem. That's fine. I'm going to end that's on fine. time. Thank you. My brand new biblical question. Brand new. Biblical question, do you long for pleasure or adversity? Do you long for pleasure? So I is longing for pleasure. No, that's the exact same thing, pleasure and pain. Do you long for pleasure or adversity? Adversity is pain. Which one do you long for? Who, who do I, lo what do I long for? Yeah, do you long for pleasure or adversity? Pleasure. See there? Suffer. <laughs> Why? Well, that's my biblical question. I do a radio show every day, and I always have a biblical question. So I can't, I don't want to answer that yet. I'll okay. tell you who we talk, but. Uh, this is horrific what I'm living through right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cut it okay. out, man. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. I got, I got to get rid of the negative thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> that's a thought, too. It's a thought. Just yeah. Observe. Oh, yeah. observe. Just observe those thoughts. Oh, observe the thoughts. Yes. But Dispassionately. Don't so just be neutral to the, the thoughts. Yeah. Don't believe them and don't okay. doubt them. Just observe them. Don't have any opinion about them. Just observe them. Oh, wow. That's a trick. Isn't it, isn't yeah, that I, I, guess, I guess I'm so analytical. And That's a trick. Did you, hold on for a minute. Did you recently. go to college? No, but I, I, I'm an overthinker, I guess. Yeah, you just like your mama. Oh. And she's never satisfied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let it go, Alice. Uh, do you know how to find this on YouTube, The Silent Prayer? Uh, no, I don't. Silentprayer.video. It's on that card there. We need your support. Uh, I'm asking all of you to donate, so we got a lot of work to do. And uh, I really appreciate your support. We're on the radio every day, Monday through Friday, jlptalk.com. We have the best counseling service on this side of heaven, really, the best. So if you need counseling, by phone or Skype or come in, come into the office. Call the 800 number, 800-411-BOND for counseling service.